um, it now seems unlikely that the Deontay Wilder fight is next. Um, just sort of priorities and everything. We know that necessarily. I mean, the situation is there's been months of conversations with um, Saudi Arabia and, and obviously individually with Anthony Joshua and with Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua both agreed to the fight, the terms, the money, everything. We know there's a change in landscape over there, and I, you know, I mean, we'll see how that unfolds. But at the moment, until we receive a contract to do that fight, it's not happening. With the normally optimistic Eddie Hearn professing that the long-awaited and often teased Wilder and Joshua fight once again off for now, fans of the now inactive heavyweight division remain unsatisfied. Regardless of our frustration over the big fights not happening in the biggest and arguably most important division in all of boxing, hopefully promoters and matchmakers come up with a plan to get the top contenders and champions to be active in order to restore hope back with Tyson Fury vs. Oleksandr Usyk and Wilder vs. Joshua soon to come. In the meantime, here are three alternative fight ideas for both Wilder and Joshua and the angles that make each appealing with each fight fun but not too threatening to the wilder Joshua fight itself. Starting with the more active Joshua, there have been reports of Frank Warren offering the services of the number three option on this list, the recently defeated Daniel Dubois. While many may question Warren potentially lining up his fighter for what would probably be a second consecutive defeat, the upside here for Dubois and Frank Warren would be an opportunity at a high money promotion with the still marketable Joshua without Warren sacrificing his most valuable commodity in Tyson Fury. Meanwhile Joshua would have a chance at an all-British showdown against a once promising contender whose confidence may be at an all-time low after his stoppage loss against Usyk. A Joshua vs. Dubois matchup would be explosive while it lasts, though some may question the likelihood of Hearn and Frank Warren working together on a promotion. At number two is perennial French contender Gerald Washington. If the objective is to be as prepared for Wilder as possible while not exposing Joshua to too much danger, Washington's combination of size, athletic ability, but overall lack of power provides a reasonable dress rehearsal for the bronze bomber. Washington's performance against Derek Chisora left many fans believing he'd won and at the very least was impressive enough to warrant another payday against Joshua. Coming in at number one may be a surprise choice, and that is the Nigerian power-punching Ife Ajagba. Ajagba provides a near-perfect facsimile to Wilder physically, only one inch shorter at 6'6 with an 85-inch reach to boot, and unlike Washington, threatens Joshua with a fight-ending punch. His connection to top rank may lessen the chances of a matchup with Joshua, as he may possibly be in the process of being groomed for a fight against Jared Anderson. For the bronze bomber, time is of the essence. With only one round of action in over a year, he needs to shake the cobwebs off prior to a mega clash with Joshua. In a recent interview, contender and recent opponent of both Anthony Joshua and Dillian White Jermaine Franklin addressed the possibility of a Deontay Wilder clash and is number three on the list of Wilder potential opponents. Well, it's not good head on your shoulders, not good attitude to it all, but I hear also you're looking at the top two and you're looking at potentially targeting Deontay Wilder. That's the fight you're looking for, right? Yeah, I mean, huh? anybody at the top. I feel like, um, with all due respect, I feel like if you're at the top, you stand by yourself, you know. I'm a competitor at the end of the day, and I got a family to feed. You. The angle here is that the tough and durable Franklin went the distance with both Joshua and White, and a knockout victory by Wilder would provide a decent feather in his cap by comparison. In addition, Franklin's asking price probably wouldn't be too high, and the fight shouldn't be too hard to make on short notice. At number two, Derek Chusora. Chusora's August decision over Gerald Washington, combined with his always fun promotional tours, would make for fun banter with the hardest punching heavyweight in the world. With Del Bowie surely near the end of his career, he may be just crazy enough to make his swan song against one of the only top contenders he is yet to face. Yo, everybody's asking, when am I fighting? When am I gonna fight? Why don't I fight Wilder? Nobody wants to fight. I'm staying ready, baby. 
Tell Joshua, let's do the trilogy. Tell Wilder, I'm ready. Make me another contract. Usyk, Tyson Fury, everybody wants to get a, go through the shortcuts. But I'm here, baby, we're working. Look at these legs right here. Working, baby, working. Finally, coming in at number one, the Deontay Wilder versus Andy Ruiz fight could be revisited. With both fighters still aligned with PBC and in need of paydays, the clash between the two former champions has always been a natural. However, disagreements over monetary splits caused this potentially division-changing bout to be scrapped. But if these two are going to make the money they're now accustomed to after championship appearances, their best avenue still might be each other, and this, despite some people's objections, may still be a pay-per-view level fight that's too obvious to pass up. But overall, from Wilder's standpoint, he has to get busy sooner rather than later, one way or the other. If you like this content, please share, like, and subscribe.